Let's call this lovable lies. I borrowed that from someone who was on my uh actually I could just keep going, I guess. Okay, starting over. So let's call this lovable lies. And I borrowed this from someone who was in one of my classes. And I just thought that was such a nice way to put it, lovable lies. Because, you know, our job is to protect the person with dementia, right? Because they can't think properly. They can't self-soothe. The person with dementia is unable to do those things anymore because their executive function doesn't exist anymore. So I really loved the term that uh, my friend Pasha came up with, lovable lies. So sometimes we say little white lies to protect a relationship, right? Or sometimes we do it to benefit the other person so we don't hurt their feelings. Little white lies can build a person's self-confidence or spare someone's feelings. Have you ever received a gift for your birthday or or Christmas and, and you just didn't like it? Well, you didn't look over at that person and say, oh, I don't like this gift. Take it back. This is, I, what were you thinking? I would never like this gift. So sometimes telling the truth isn't going to change the outcome, right? It, it's just going to hurt someone's feelings. So when it comes to Alzheimer's and dementia, lying is not about deceiving. It's about helping someone feel secure and feel safe and reduce their anxiety or their fears. That's what it's about. It's about reducing a person with dementia's fear and anxiety about maybe what's going on around them. So fibbing can actually be an act of kindness. It's, it's helping them with their feelings and helping them not to feel afraid. You're helping that person to relax and feel calm. So lovable lies or fibbing, it's wrong when it's done to mock someone or to lie at someone else's expense. That's not good, right? That's mean. So, and it's bad if we're making a joke out of somebody or seeing how far you can go. That's not, that's not therapeutic. That's just not nice. It's bad manners. So that's the key word here, therapeutic fibbing or therapy or lovable lies. Love is a feeling. So we're taught from when we're really little that lying is a bad thing and that it's wrong to lie. It's you're being dishonest or, you know, honesty is the best policy or somehow you're a bad person if you lie. And yes, if you're lying to be malicious or deceitful or lying for a selfish purpose, then yeah, it's not good for any reason. For instance, if you're cheating on your spouse or, you know, you're stealing, those would be big fat five lies, right? They would be very bad. But let's talk about lying with compassion or lovable lies, because that's what we're talking about. Lying with purpose and compassion. We know that people with dementia are often out of sorts. They have behaviors and outbursts. They get frustrated. They get angry easily. They may have hallucinations or delusions. They may seem to be unstable. They can't control it. They need our help. People who are inflicted with dementia have a de deficit in recall and memory. The part of the brain where our most recent memories are stored has been damaged. As the disease progresses, the person will be relying on memories of days gone by. Their brain is experiencing a different version of reality than yours and mine. They may even think that they're living in the past. To them, they may be living between the ages of about 14 and 24 years old. This is very, very important because when they're talking about people or pets or their home that that they aren't living here today, now, where you are, they're warped through time. Their brain is in the past. They're living in the past. They've gone through a time machine. So knowing that, 
let's say that mom thinks that she's 20 years old. She's a young, beautiful, she's a housewife and she just got married and she has a brand new little baby. And that baby is you. And here you come walking in the house like you always do. Hi, mom. And she doesn't respond. Or maybe she, she, maybe she even gets upset. And you try to tell her, mom, it's me, your daughter, Sue. But she doesn't believe you. In fact, now she's getting upset, right? And angry. No matter what you do, she will not recognize you as her child. Because in her brain damage, you're just a little baby. You haven't even been born yet. You will never convince her. It's not possible. She no longer has the brain capacity to be brought into the real world, into our world today. In fact, you're just going to scare the hell out of her and you're going to push her into an argument because she's going to try to prove her point and you're going to try to prove your point. So what should you do? You should pretend to be whoever she needs you to be. Maybe she thinks you're her mom or maybe she thinks you're her best friend from high school. Okay, then be her best friend from high school or be her mom. This is lovable lies. Lovable lies because it's good for mom. It can also be defined as therapeutic fibbing. And the definition of therapy, by the way, is a treatment intended to relieve or heal a disorder. In this case, the disorder is dementia. Another definition is therapy is the treatment of mental or physical illness without the use of drugs or operations. Sounds like dementia to me, right? The five goals of therapy is one, to uh, change or alter a person's behaviors. The second one is to establish and maintain relationships. The third is to enhance the ability to cope. And when we talk about that one, people with dementia are not able to cope on their own. They're unable to self-soothe. They cannot cope. So it is up to us to do that as therapy. Number four, facilitate decision-making. Again, a person with dementia is not going to make proper decisions. So we have to help them with that. Number five is development. A person with Alzheimer's is not able to achieve any of those five goals on their own. As a nurse, an aide, a caregiver, or a spouse, our job is to protect the person with dementia, right? That's our job is to protect the person with dementia. They need protection from their own mind. It can take a lot of practice to be able to switch over to be with them where they may be in their reality. That's real talent. When you can do this quickly and successfully, stepping into a dementia person's reality isn't the same thing as lying. It's meeting them where they are in the timeline. You can't force someone to abandon their versions of reality. Trying to do so is going to cause confusion, pain, fear, anger. And all you're going to do is damage your relationship. That's all you're going to do. You're going to create arguments. You're creating the argument. So telling the truth can actually be downright cruel. A friend of mine, Nancy, told me a story about her dad who had dementia. And um, she, was, she would go to visit him at the nursing home. And he would feed his dog, his deceased many years ago dog, the food, he would put his plate on the floor and try to feed the dog. And the aides and the staff would pick up the plate and tell him, the staff would pick up the plate and tell him, not to do that. They would tell him not to do that. They would constantly pick up the plate and tell him to finish his meal. The staff was unaware that her father would always feed the dog scraps from his dinner plate. In this situation, we should not only go along with the notion of feeding the dog, but we would even take it one step farther 
and maybe find out what's the dog's name and tell dad something like, wow, Spot sure loved that and he gobbled it right up. You would never tell dad that Spot died 15, 20 years ago. If dad was living in the past, how do you think he would receive the information about Spot, his favorite dog that was dead? Shock, disbelief, grief, sadness. He would be reliving those feelings and emotions all over again. This is lovable lying or therapeutic fibbing. It doesn't hurt anyone to go along with dad's world. In fact, we've made him feel even better by telling him how much Spot loved that wonderful meal. You're so generous, you know, to share your dinner with your dog. If you had told him the truth, you would be trying to force him into a reality that he can no longer comprehend. And you're forcing him to experience it, distress and grief all over again. And this is completely unnecessary, totally unnecessarily. Therapeutic fibbing can be very, very effective if used properly. When someone is hallucinating or having a catastrophic reaction to something or maybe a person, Lovable lies can be used as a diversion tactic to help prevent escalation or, in the best case scenario, diffusing a situation. People with dementia or neurodegeneration are unable to self-soothe. They can't play the role of reason in their head to calm themselves down like we can. They can't use logic or say, oh, I have Alzheimer's and that's why I'm flipping out. They can't say to themselves, mm, this will pass and I'll feel better later on. They can't take a deep breath or look at a situation from another point of view. That's all because of our executive functioning no longer exists. So we can't see things from another perspective. We can't see outcomes for actions. They just can't. The benefit of a harmless Oh, excuse me. The benefit of a harmless lie to a person with dementia is to reduce their anxiety and validate their feelings and keep the person with dementia out of harm's way. Spare their feelings like the gift you didn't like. Make them feel valued, accepted, and important. These are all all great reasons to, to fib to a person with dementia. A lie is only a lie if the person or the receiver of the lie knows it's a lie, right? <laughs> so as long as a person with dementia doesn't know that you're lying, you won't lose their trust. All right, so there can be some controversy around lovable lies. Some people and some even in the Alzheimer's arena do not believe in therapeutic lying. I personally do not agree with these people and I defy that if they have ever been deep in the trenches with someone 24 seven, with a loved one suffering from sundowning or severe behaviors, emotional outbursts, hallucinations or delusions. But one thing that those who do not support therapeutic lying do believe in is validation. So validation can be awesome. In fact, it is so awesome that I have a whole chapter in my book about it. Oh, which is right here. Uh, what is it called? Oh, forget me not. So great book, whole chapter in there about validation. But um, I wrote it even before I knew that some people had a problem with therapeutic lying. But anyway, this method is really awesome and it totally works. The issue is it takes a lot of effort and planning to be uh, truthful. And when this hits the fan, it's really hard to think on your feet in the heat of the moment. When your person is getting upset or bolting out the door, the faster you can come up with anything that works, the better. Because safety, we both know safety is number one and feelings are number one. So let's talk a little bit about validation. How can we use validation techniques? You may not be comfortable lying to your person with dementia, and that's okay. But the point is to make sure that our person with neurodegeneration is content and they feel safe and secure. 
it is not necessary to inflict pain and emotion on a person with brain damage. With validation, it is more about the emotion rather than the behavior. It's about filling a need. So a behavior is a reaction to something. So we need to respond to the reaction or we're responding to the feeling that the person is experiencing. In one example, let's say that the person with dementia is living in a memory care unit. The person says that they have to go to work. So rather than fabricating a lie, like a typical response for a therapeutic lie might be, oh, the the boss called and said, don't come into work today because they're um, they're remodeling or they're having some power outages and they're working on the computers. So no harm done. But if you don't want to lie to the person, you can validate where they are. They feel like they're supposed to be going to work, right? So rather than make up a harmless lie, you could engage them in conversation about their work. So you could start asking them questions like, well, tell me about your job. What do you do at your job? Who are some of the people that you work with? What is it that you like most about your career? It sounds like you miss being at work with your coworkers. Your work sounds important to you. Tell me about it. So in these situations, you're getting the person to open up and talk about what they're missing or what they're feeling. You're not actually lying to them, but you are also not trying to convert them into today's reality because you can never do that. This helps the person with dementia feel like they're being heard and they're being validated. This way, the person is able to express their feelings and it can create a sense of relief for them. So it's a choice, right? To lie or not to lie. What is the best for your person with dementia? The biggest point here is keeping them calm and relaxed and feeling safe. If you can validate, do that. Whatever we need to do for the person to be happy, that's all that really matters. It's kind of like saying happy wife, happy life. Remember that? Happy dementia person, happy caregiver, right? Okay. So if you don't know by now, I'm Deborah Costu. You're in the family now. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you subscribe for me and comment and let me know what else uh, you're struggling with, right? And um, head over to my website. It's answersaboutalg.org. No, alz.org. Wow, that was weird. Um, I have a lot of free things. I don't know if they're in the library or the resource center. Actually, it doesn't matter because I have someone who's redoing the whole website. Oh my gosh, wait till you see it. It's going to be gorgeous. But um, there's a lot of free resources for you there. Every single one of you watching will find value in there. Um, and I have some freebies. So you can print them. You can read them. Lots of really great resources. Um, and you can also learn more about the Master Dementia Strategist course, which I highly recommend. If you're having a person with dementia in your life, you could take the full course. And I'm going to tell you from soup to nuts everything you need to know, every tool, all the questions you've never had answers, how you handle every single little problem. In fact, there's over 275, 275 exact phrases of what to say and not to say to someone with dementia. It's a four-day course. The, the, uh, the times, it's approximately five hours for each course, five days, four days. I say five days, four days. So it's a four day course. So um, you can also get more information on that over at the website, answersaboutalz.org. So you're in the family now. Hit subscribe. Together we can. And I will see you next time.